Nonetheless, we meet today at a time when the United States faces a daunting set of challenges at home and abroad, when questions are being raised about the sustainability and credibility of our commitments around the world these questions are serious and legitimate. No doubt, fighting two protracted and costly wars in Iraq and Afghanistan has strained the U.S. military's ground forces and worn out the patience and appetite of the American people for similar interventions in the future. On the domestic front, the United States is emerging slowly from a serious recession with huge budget deficits and a growing debt that is putting new security and downward pressure, new scrutiny and downward pressure on the U.S. defense budget. These are some of the stark realities that we face. But at the same time, it is important in this place, before this audience, to recognize an equally compelling set of facts with respect to America's position in Asia. A record demonstrating that irrespective of the tough times the U.S. faces today or the tough budget choices we confront in the years to come, that America's interests as a Pacific nation, as a country that conducts much of its trade in the region, will endure. And the United States and Asia will only become more inextricably linked over the course of this century. As I hope my presentation today will show these realities this understanding shared by U.S. leaders and policymakers across the political spectrum argue strongly for sustaining our commitments to allies while maintaining a robust military engagement and deterrence posture across the Pacific Rim. This statement is underscored by the significant growth in the breadth and intensity of U.S. engagement in Asia in recent years even at a time of economic distress at home and two major military campaigns ongoing in Iraq and Afghanistan. Three years ago, I spoke at this gathering and touted the fact that I was on my fourth major trip to Asia Pacific in the previous 18 months. Now I can report that this is my 14th trip to Asia over the last four and a half years. Next month, Secretary of State Clinton will embark on her eighth trip to Asia and President Obama has made a major Asia trip each year he has been in office. Indeed, one of the most striking and surprising changes I've observed during my travels to Asia is the widespread desire across the region for stronger military-to-military -military relationships with the United States, much more so than during my last time in government 20 years ago. Our engagement in Asia has been guided by a set of enduring principles that have fostered the economic growth and stability of the region. I spoke about these principles last year, but I think that it's worth reiterating our commitment to them once more today. Free and open commerce, a just international order that emphasizes rights and responsibilities of nations and fidelity to the rule of law, open access by all to the global commons of sea, air, space, and now cyberspace, and the principle of resolving conflict without the use of force. The commitment and presence of the United States as a Pacific nation has been one of the relatively few constants amidst the furious changes in this region over the past half century. But as this region has changed, America has always shown the flexibility not only to maintain our presence in the Asia Pacific, but to enhance it by updating relationships, developing new capabilities, and transforming our defense posture to meet the challenges of the day.